welcome to the 2023 Environmental Champions Award. This is the 13th annual Aquarian Water Company Environmental Champions Awards presentation. My name is George Logan, and I'm the Director of Community Relations at Aquarian Water Company. Our search for environmental champions is a statewide program. Someone asked me if uh, this was a national search, but it's more of a statewide program. We also do this in, uh, uh, in New Hampshire and in Massachusetts as well. Uh, this evening, we will present five awards. I told someone the wrong information. I think I said four earlier. Five awards in the following categories. Was, it was like a test. It was like rapid fire. Large business, small business, nonprofit, adult, and student. The recognition provided by this award helps to spotlight the many people and organizations who accomplish the vital work of protecting Connecticut's environment, day in and day out, year after year. How many times do you hear about folks who are doing bad to the environment? There's so many that are doing good. And this is our opportunity to recognize some of those folks here today. Uh, at Aquarian, we take environmental stewardship very seriously and we know others throughout the state do as well. And so this evening, we will recognize some of our true environmental leaders for the great things they are doing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Vice Chairman of the Connecticut Public Utility Regulatory Authority, Jack Bukowski. Don't get up yet, though, Jack. Oh, there's Jack. Round for Jack. We'll get Jack. All right. Wave your hand or something, Jack. There he is. He is the former president of the New England Conference of Public Utilities Commissioners, NECPUC, and the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissioners, NARUC. Commissioner Bekowski is currently the chairman of the Connecticut Water Planning Council. Jackson is a busy man. He is also a member of the American Water Works Association Research Foundation's Public Council on Drinking Water Research. Is that a mouthful or what? Sounds very important, doesn't it? The key is the research in water. Commissioner Bikowski is past chairman of the board of directors for Griffin Hospital in Derby, where we served together for a number of years, and serves as chairman of the board of directors for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, Connecticut chapter, an organization he holds dear to his heart. He is also on the board of the Waterbury Youth, Waterbury Youth Services which he recently tried to recruit me to, and I'm going to be a mentor. Yes, him. This is the kind of guy yes. Commissioner Rakowski is. And Varka Inc. of Derby, which is a private nonprofit agency which provides work opportunities to individuals with special needs. He served as a member of the Connecticut General Assembly, representing the 105th District as a state representative from 1987 to 1997. So at this time, I would like to invite Commissioner Bukowski to the stand. Thank you very much, George. It's uh, great to be here on the 13th celebration, uh, 13th anniversary of the Environmental uh, Awards. This is one of my favorite events. Uh, Aquarian does a phenomenal job uh, recognizing people uh, for what they do to protect uh, our most uh, cherished uh, resource, water, our environment, and the great creative things we're going to hear about tonight that people do uh, to maintain that. Uh, you know, in this world of uh, so much strife and struggle and everything else, it's nice to come to events like this and see all the good uh, that people are doing uh, for our state and for our society. So uh, thank you all for being here. It's also nice to see uh, my good friend Mayor Loretti's here from Shelton this evening. And um, where is he? Mayor? Raise, yeah, raise your hand. Give him a round of applause. It's nice to have Mayor. Wanna, if you want to see, you want to see how it gets, uh, should get done, drive through Shelton. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh, George, I'm, I'm reading my introduction, George. <laughs> Will Harlan Stone, CEO of HMTX Industries, please come forward? Harlan, here he is. It's here for Harlan. <laughs> HMTX Industries, a global manufacturing 
of luxury vinyl tile and plank flooring products has recently completed the construction of their new 23,000 square foot corporate headquarters in Norwalk, Connecticut, known as House Up on the Hill, which the acronym is H-U-O-T-H. The building stands as a testament to their commitment to sustainability and addressing climate change. Designed by renowned architect Jason McClenna, the headquarters was built to meet the rigorous standards of the Living Building Challenge, making it one of the greenest buildings in Connecticut. They incorporate various eco-friendly features, such as the use of non-toxic materials, solar-powered mechanicals, rainwater collection systems. It is a design to have a minimal impact on surrounding landscape, preserving wildlife corridors, and showcasing eco ecologically restorative landscaping. The building also emphasizes experiences integrating natural elements throughout its design to create a connection to the natural world. Designed and built to the standards of the Living Building Challenge, it aims to be largely self-sufficient and generate a positive impact on both people and the environment. It serves as an innovation center, providing spaces for artists in residence design students, inspirational galleries, and a cutting edge product development technologies. The headquarters will produce more energy than it consumes. Will produce more energy than it consumes. Yeah. A round of applause for that. Yeah. He met zero carbon emissions during operation and prioritized the use of healthy and non-toxic materials. Its architecture encourages occupants to engage with nature, offering views of the outdoors. I read this over, I said, I want to get an office there pretty soon. It's a very beautiful <laughs> access to uh, fresh air and connection to the surrounding landscape. It features a green roof with panoramic views, allowing occupants to appreciate the community's natural beauty. In addition, it symbolizes HMTX's dedication to sustainability, innovation, and teamwork. The company aims to lead the way to regenerative design, providing a model for more co ecologically conscious future. The headquarters will serve as a quiet retreat in an urban setting, fostering creativity, collaboration, and well-being. HMTX's New World Headquarters embodies the commitment to sustainability and serves as a unique example of a greener future. So we're pleased this evening to present HMTX Industries with the 2023 Aquarium Environmental Champion Award for the Large Business Category. Mr. Stone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate the award. Okay, first, first picture. Are you Now I get to talk. So thank you very much for this award and, and thanks for everyone being here. I just would like to say a couple words about the headquarters beyond the very accurate and excellent description we heard is that uh, we hope that we are setting an example for other for-profit enterprises to make the investment in a sustainable, long-lasting, and inspiring building. So it's not only an investment that allows you to uh, capture rainwater and create your own electricity, but it's a building that's gonna last 100 years. So that's not how buildings are built today. And people should build buildings that should last a long time, and the people that come into the building should feel motivated, and should feel happy about coming to work. So changing the way that a workspace is created and used it was our goal. Uh, we designed the building before, before the pandemic, but it seems to be the appropriate building after the pandemic. We have only, we have 23,000 square feet inside, uh, 1,000 square feet on the roof. So I like to say it's 24,000 square feet. <laughs> and there's only two offices in the building and one is not yet used. So we really use it for collaboration. We really use it for creativity. And just recently, we put up, uh, uh, we had an artist in residence for two months living in, uh, we have residential you know, guest quarters in there. We had an artist in residence, he and his assistant. We're occupying two of our guest quarters for the last several months. And just on Friday at six o'clock, we finished putting up their artworks on our outdoor plaza. 10 panels. Uh, made out of cement, painted, and it's one of the most beautiful things I think that exists in the city of Norwalk and maybe even in a broader selection than that. So I hope you all will have a chance to come by and see the house upon the hill and see what maybe the future of workspace would look like and hopefully we'll inspire others to make these kind of investments that reduce not only our footprint,
but increase our handprint, whereby as we touch the earth, we are thinking about the plants, the animals, the environment, the wind, the rain, but mostly about the people who work in the building and give them some positive energy about their work. And that's our goal. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ubria Drisdenko, River Steward for Connecticut River Conservancy, please come forward. The Connecticut River Conservancy is an organization dedicated to protecting and advocating Connecticut River watersheds spanning four states. Their mission involves collaborating with partners to prevent pollution, improve habitat, and promote the enjoyment of the river and its tributaries. Established in 1952, the CRC was created to address the significant water pollution problems in the Connecticut River and it has pioneered that concept of watershed planning. Today, their work focuses on safeguarding the Connecticut River and its vast 11,000 square mile watershed, ensuring that it remains cherished and beautiful place for generations to come. Trash and aquatic invasive plants pose serious threats to rivers, disrupting ecosystems and harming native wildlife. To combat these issues, CRC leads two successful programs, the Source to Sea Cleanup and Paddle with Purpose. In 2022, these programs engaged nearly 400 volunteers in Connecticut alone, with over 1,600 volunteers participating across the entire Connecticut River watershed. The 26th annual Source to Sea Cleanup carried out 126 cleanup groups across four states, removed over 37 tons of trash from the rivers and the surroundings, 37 tons. And by the way, I'm gonna do a footnote. There's a new bill in Hartford to increase the fines for trash, and I support it. Uh, I mean, sock it to them, that's all I can say. The Paddle with Purpose events targeted the removal of approximately 900,000 invasive water chestnut plants in Connecticut and Massachusetts involving 50 partner organizations. They advocated for the establish establishment of the Office of Aquatic Invasive Species in Connecticut to find long-term solutions to the problem. These programs make a significant impact in protecting the health of natural rivers and clean water. They not only address the immediate issues of pollution and invasive species, but also engage community members in act actively caring for the local rivers. By participating in these programs, volunteers have the opportunity to develop a deeper connection with the rivers and become lifelong stewards of the environment. The CRC believes that through these efforts, they can inspire individuals to take positive action, not only locally, but also on a global scale. Their commitment to preserving the Connecticut River and its watershed exemplifies the dedication to creating a sustainable and thriving environment for both nature and communities. For this far-reaching and powerful commitment to the environment, we are proud to present the Connecticut River Conservancy Award with the 2023 Aquarian Environmental Champion Award in a nonprofit category. Congratulations to the whole team, and please come up. Thank you so much um, for that great introduction, um, and thank you all for being here and being um, great, passionate um, uh, folks for the environment. Um, so at the Connecticut River Conservancy, our motto is clean water, healthy habitats, and thriving communities. Uh, so what does that mean, right? You talked about um, the important work that we do to prevent pollution by going to Hartford and pushing for legislation uh, that prevents pollution from happening in the first place. Um, it also means uh, restoring natural habitats, whether that's removing deadbeat dams from our rivers or planting uh, native trees along river banks. Um, but the last part, thriving communities, that's the part that really gets me jazzed. Um, 
So thriving communities are ones that um, go out and believe that they are environmental stewards of our, of our natural resources. They are communities that have access um, to clean water. They're or communities that have access to recreation and enjoyment. Um, so you mentioned our source to sea cleanup that engages over a thousand volunteers um, every year throughout the watershed. You know, brings together community groups, um, youth groups, people of all ages. And for a lot of kids, this is the first time they're getting interested in environmental work. I know that's something that I got into when I was a kid myself. Um, so we have all these opportunities for people to connect with their rivers um, in a deeper way, in a more meaningful way um, for a whole lifetime. Um, so again, a huge thank you. Um, we're really honored to get this award from Aquarian Water Company. Um, and a huge shout out and thank you to all of our CRC volunteers who helped make this work possible. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, you know we have got a, a dignitary here, all the way from fresh from coming down from Washington, Senator Richard Blumenthal. Yeah. Senator, just wave your hand for a minute there. Thank you. We're, we're so happy you're here to join us uh, today. He's going to actually introduce a couple of our, our winners, uh, but before I do that, I just want to acknowledge a few folks here that's come in. The Stratford Mayor, Laura Hoydick. We stand up and wave to the folks here. <laughs> Just like Mayor Loretti from Shelton, a true partner of Aquarium, when it comes to issues related to the uh, environment. So thank you for being, for being here. Uh, also, just want to acknowledge uh, uh, some folks from the Aquarium uh, crew who's here as well. Uh, uh, my boss and Vice President of Administration, Lucy Texiera. You can wave there, Lucy. There she is in the back. <laughs> We also have Dan Lawrence, he's the Director of Engineering and Real Estate here, with his wife Mary Beth. I'd be remiss to not mention my own wife, Lisa, who's hanging out out there. Hey, Lisa. Ah, uh, she's going to love that. I'm going to get in trouble for that one later. And we also have uh, Peter Fizikas over here. Peter, wave your hand there. Understated fella here. Really the spearhead putting together most of this uh, program. We follow his lead. Thank you, Peter, for everything you've done with this, uh, uh, this program. And Jeff Glagowski, the cameraman over there for us. <laughs> the team effort. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our United States Senator, Richard Blumenthal. Since, yeah, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, give each other. Oh, come on. You know, I, uh, I re remember hearing, uh, I don't know, it was, maybe it was a month ago, uh, that he uh, broke his leg, his femur, right? So, oh, man, that sounds serious, right? Like two weeks later, he's back out working with the people. So uh, thank you. He's a tough, uh, tough cookie. Uh, Senator uh, Blumenthal has been in the public eye and serving Connecticut residents for a long time. Uh, and he really requires no formal introduction. Everyone here knows who he is. But I would like to review his long history and passion for supporting environmental issues. And they include prevention of interstate air pollution, longtime vocal advocate of the position that human activity is responsible for rising global temperatures. And he's a proponent for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. He's a leader in the protection of our environment, including the protection of Long Island Sound and Connecticut's rivers and streams that we all hold dear. So ladies and gentlemen, our great senator and is our great friend to the environment, I give you U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Thank you so much, George. Uh, George and I have known each other for quite a while. I've always admired his dedication to the environment and his community involvement, his real sense of hands-on leadership. And I also want to recognize uh, another great friend, Jack. Bekowski. He and I served together in the state legislature. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago. Uh, but uh, a great friend and also an advocate of environmental values. And uh, I want to thank the mayor for being here. She and I were together at the Stratford Parade just about a week ago. Uh, another champion. Uh, all of which 
I think, show us something very important about this occasion and about environmental causes. They are bipartisan. They're not political in the sense of the word that all too often divides us. And I work in a place and an environment, if you will, that is uh, all too often divided by those partisan divisions. And today brings us together, and so does the, the cause of environmental preservation, environmental justice, in a way that's very community-minded and bipartisan. I want to thank Aquarion. Uh, you know, I began today at 8.30 this morning in Fairfield at uh, an event called Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, sponsored by the Center for Family Justice. Aquarion was the lead sponsor. And this event, not exactly akin in terms of what you would normally think of as a cause, obviously, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, Center for Family Justice, many of you know, dedicated to stopping domestic violence and sexual assault. And Aquarion is in the leadership of that cause. So many of the issues that bring us together, where we need to be together, Aquarion is in the lead. So um, I've been to this event uh, many times over the years, uh, sometimes in the uh, in the space uh, inside the museum where there are uh, partridges or uh, ostriches or whatever the birds are, uh, and we're interrupted frequently <laughs> by the sound of uh, animals. But uh, on a day like today, actually, it's wonderful to be inside uh, and uh, really a, a very warm feeling of togetherness. Uh, for some people and organizations that are just incredible. You know, I'm so proud to be here. I'm so proud to be from Connecticut with organizations and individuals like the ones that we're celebrating today that literally lead by example. You know, it's the old walk the walk instead of just talking the talk. These people don't need to talk. They live it. And I want to begin uh, by talking about Jones Family Farms and Jones Winery. And I've visited them on numerous occasions. I've come to know the family. And it is an extraordinary family. Uh, Will Jamie Jones is a sixth generation farmer. And his wife, Christina, uh, why don't you all come up, um, if you would, please? You know, I, I, I love talking about people like this when they have to stand in front of you. So we, uh, and, and often the people who deserve the most praise are most embarrassed by it. You know, they, they just want to go about doing good things. But uh, Jones Family Farms, located in the White Hills of Shelton, has upheld a commitment to sustainable practices for over 150 years. Years. I know they don't look that old, but <laughs> actually they're guided by the words of the founder, Philip James Jones, quote, be good to the land and the land will be good to you. Each generation of that family has contributed their expertise and their commitment to the diverse agricultural and farm hospitality operation. The farm is divided into three locations. Uh, the Homestead Farm, the Valley Farm, and the Pumpkin Seed Hill, where Christmas trees, strawberries, blueberries, pumpkins, gourds, and squash are cultivated on 400 acres. And visitors are invited to harvest their own berries, pumpkins, and Christmas trees, as many of you know, because I'm sure many of you have been there. Uh, Jones Family Farms also hosts more than 10 acres of grapevines. Uh, so, they are, forgive me, deeply rooted. <laughs> uh, Jamie Jones, who is the sixth generation farmer, established Jones Winery in 1999, which has become one of Connecticut's premier wineries. 
Jones Winery prides itself on showcasing the best of Connecticut by using a high percentage of local fruit, local fruit in its wines. With over 20 years of winemaking experience, they offer a wide range of distinctive products. Uh, their commitment to environmental sustainability led to the installation of a solar array that powers the winery's production and bottling facility, harnessing the sun's energy for that facility, just as the sun powers the growth of the grapevines and ripens the fruit in their vineyards. Jamie, along with Christina and parents Terry and Jean, continue to be respected leaders in this industry. He holds positions as director of the Fairfield County Farm Bureau, the Connecticut Vineyard and Winery Association, and the Governor's Council for Agricultural Development. Their dedication to Connecticut agricultural excellence is evident in their commitment to sustainable practices and production of exceptional wines. The Jones Family Farms and Jones Winery have created a harmonious living environment in uh, the picturesque White Hills with neat stone walls, well-maintained fields, and a uh, wonderful atmosphere of family and togetherness. The firm's longevity and success reflect their commitment to these values. For Jones Family Farms and Jones Winery, commitment to the environment, Aquarion, and I am too, is proud to recognize their efforts with the 2023 Environmental Champion Award in the small business category so congratulations to, to Jamie and Chris, uh, Christina, but I also want to say uh, Terry and Jean also yes. deserve, I think you would agree, yes. an enormous amount of credit. I mean, literally, this is the sixth generation, and there aren't too many of those kinds of farms or businesses that manage to sustain both the family business and sustain the environment at the same time. It's really very, very rare. And I am very grateful to both of you for being here. Thank you. I, I had no idea, Senator, you would be here, and I, I can't help but you, I'm sure you don't remember, but literally to probably this week, 30 years ago is when I first met you. <laughs> I was at Boys State, and you were Attorney General, and I can't believe that, like 30 years later, you're shaking my hand again. So it's a, you know, you, you hang around long enough, I guess, it's, it's a small. And, and I don't look a day old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is very, very flattering. Um, I, um, you know, what makes our farm a success? I mean, we've got an amazing team of employees. Um, it wouldn't happen without the community that we're part of, the greater community, just those who support us by harvesting their crops at our farm, uh, drinking our wine. Um, it's, uh, it, it, and, and for us as a family to continue to grow, uh, when I was born on the farm, uh, we were farming a little over 250 acres, and now we're uh, over 500 acres. Uh, most of it's been preserved. It's our family's philosophy to keep it preserved, you know, in perpetuity. Um, Aquarium now, I, when I grew up, it was uh, the Bridgeport Hydraulic Company, uh, and we probably share over a mile of common boundary together. Uh, every morning I can wake up, I look out my bedroom window and I look across our Christmas tree fields and our hay fields and right there along the woodlands, it's all hydraulic company or aquarian property. So um, we've been you know, farming like this for you know, six generations, 150 years, taking care of the land, maybe even getting better at it as we learn to be better partners, working with nature, not always against it. And uh, you know, just very grateful for this, the Aquarian, and all of you who could, could be here. 
because we don't, our farm doesn't exist without a community that supports it. So thank you all very much. So I have the honor of uh, presenting a, a second award. Uh, and uh, by the way, just uh, for your information, I have this cane. I don't think I really need it, but the doctor has ordered me to use it. Uh, and the, the explanation for the cane and for the broken leg, I was marching in the Yukon basketball victory parade in downtown Hartford, magnificent parade, great team. And uh, I was marching with the governor and some other elected officials, and someone was walking in back of me. I didn't see him. He was walking backward. And he tripped on the back of my foot. Uh, he went on me, knocked me over. I had no idea what was happening. Came down on top of me, and I broke, uh, fractured my femur, the big bone in the leg. Uh, had surgery the next day, uh, three pins, and uh, I'm on my way back to full strength, but not even a broken leg would keep me away today. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure that for uh, George and Jack, we've all been involved in elective office. I'm sure there's a moral here, like watch your back in a parade. But <laughs> I'm not going there today. But I am, I, I've, and I've, I finished the parade with a broken leg and then I went up on the reviewing stand. I came down. At that point, I knew something really was wrong. So I went to the emergency room of the hospital. The surgeon said, we're not letting you go home. I told him, well, I could finish the parade. And he said, <laughs> no. Uh, he said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, so you can see I haven't learned that much since Boy State 30 years ago. <laughs> Uh, I want to invite uh, Diane Lorisella to please come forward. Uh, Diane, whom I've known quite a while as well, is a resident of Norwalk since the 1980s. Uh, she is a passionate environmental advocate. She believes in making informed choices through research and honest communication to protect our health and natural resources. Her journey began as an intern with the first taxing district water company, where she helped identify the source of trichloroethylene, also known as TCE, which was a pollutant in Norwalk's water supply. This experience sparked her love for research and fact-finding, leading her to become an environmental investigator for the Connecticut DEEP Hazardous Materials Management Unit. Diane's dedication to her community led her to join the local League of Women Voters of Norwalk, where she organized Norwalk's first household hazardous waste collection day and advised the city on waste management and the use of less toxic products. She also became involved in various environmental organizations, including the Sierra Club and the Norwalk River Watershed Association, where she served as chair and advocated for the importance of watersheds and environmental education. In addition to her community involvement, Diane started her own environmental consulting business, the Environmental Innovations Group, EIG, and she actively participated in chambers of commerce and environmental committee meetings. She's been a strong advocate for waste management, recycling, and food waste reduction, working toward holistic approaches at the state and local level. Diane's passion for a clean energy future led her to organize the Norwalk Energy Task Force and subsequently to serve on the Mayor's Energy and Environmental Task Force. She's been advocating for healthy school environments, leading efforts to address indoor air quality concerns and urging a thorough assessment of artificial turf fields and many other 
potential environmental and health risks. Throughout her years of community service, Diane has played a vital role in preserving open spaces, organizing cleanups, and promoting environmental justice. She has been a driving force behind the protection of photo farm, the creation of community gardens, and efforts to improve water quality and stormwater management. Diane's dedication to environmental causes has earned her recognition as the conscience of Norwalk. And she continues to advocate for various organizations such as Recycle Connecticut Foundation, Norwalk Tree Alliance, and the Mayor's Quality Committee. Uh, she has a firm belief, I can tell you from knowing her, in the importance of vigilance over our democracy. She looks forward, as always, to helping her community prepare for a sustainable and successful future. I will say on a personal note, as you gathered from this recitation of all her accomplishments, she is a, an environmental advocate for all seasons, for all causes. This is her life's work. And it's not just advocacy, she gets results. Um, she's worked in government, she's worked in private organizations, she's been in consulting work, uh, and there's no one who better deserves this award from Aquarion as the Environmental Champion Award in the adult category for 2023. Uh, here for a second. I'm so nervous, even though I speak in public quite often. I just wanted to tell you that, I um, have to take a deep breath, but I wanted to thank the Aquarian Water Company, the Beardsley Zoo, because I hope a lot of you will have some good fun and food later. But both of these groups represent conservation and the need to protect our environment for the future and for our kids, for our families and, and the world, for our literally our future. Um, I'm a real news hound and uh, I was, as I was coming here from Norwalk, I was flipping around on the uh, radio stations, tragedy after tragedy, and so I decided I wanted to switch to my favorite WPKN in Bridgeport and I was grooving to The Clash and some other <laughs> wonderful radio stations that calmed me down. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I have some friends here that could make it, and I thank them. You've all been an inspiration to me in one way or the other. I try to invite people from every facet of my life. I uh, was born in Mount Vernon, but I grew up in Newtown. That's, and as you know, Newtown has been through some tragedy, but also in Newtown, I learned about the environment through Girl Scouts and the science classes I took. I also have some friends here that have really made an impact in my life and in the world, either with E! Magazine, uh, Between the Lines, which we all should be listening to about the most under-reported uh, stories. We have someone here who is fighting the good fight when she shouldn't about coastal area management and wetlands. We have someone here who has started and is very inspirational to me and is working on a swap shop with me in Norwalk and has put together a group called What If? And then you could fill in the blank with something positive. I have uh, nature photographers and Qigong uh, teachers here, uh, Newtown friends, uh, uh, a health and safety person. I don't know if Steve is here, but uh, he and I work on environmental justice issues. And then lastly, Democracy for America. We're trying, uh, uh, my friends put together monthly, um, monthly meetings to keep people in the know about what's happening in your democracy because as former president of the League of Women Voters of Norwalk, never an easy town to do things in. Even to this day, democracy is not a spectator sport. 
It has never been easy to speak truth to power, and as women know, it's even more difficult, although we can use our feminine wiles sometimes to get people to see the way. Uh, be it a public official, a polluter, the mayor, young people also must get involved. And what I wanted to leave you with is don't be afraid to learn how your local and state government works. I love teaching people about how to get on the agenda in their city council or town council. Um, we organize people uh, to try to stop a, an oil tank farm in a um, predominantly people of color homeowner area in Norwalk years ago. We had prayer circles in front of City Hall. They never saw anything like it before, and I hope we're going to do it again for other issues. Um, it's really important to work together, organize together. And I wanted to tell you, well, World Ocean Week is coming June 5th through 11th. Those orcas, those orca whales are starting to organize. If some of you might have understood, they know something because they're starting to attack uh, because they've had some bad experiences. The theory is they're attacking some boats because they've had bad experiences with boats crashing into them. Long story short is we need to work together uh, the role of women and men, I love men, but we women have always inspired me. It ain't easy being us. I do think there's a lot of irony in the world, but the beauty in it, in one hand you have the fact that AI, I, I read today, may cause human extinction. Yet, I also know there's so many of you in this audience and others that still give hope and teach people about the environment and how we could do a better job, how we could have cleaner air and water. And last, lastly, coming full circle, I did start with in Norwalk with the water, this little tiny water company. I know the Bridgeport or Aquarian's been circling the wagons. They're the last two small water companies. We'll have to talk later. <laughs> But now in my own community, that same well field has contamination from PFAS or the forever chemicals. And I think I, I know where it comes from and I'm gonna be addressing it with my city because we have to be transparent about the dangers of any contaminants in our drinking water for our future. Um, I lastly uh, then wanted to just, I was going through and I found some fun photos. And I will end on this. Um, my parents took this photo of me um, as precocious Diane, holding up a toy, I guess, and looking into the future. <laughs> and when uh, I helped organize uh, cleaning up polluted water in North Stanford, I don't know, I found this photo and it looks very similar. <laughs> uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful event of neighborhoods and we were able to get then Mayor um, uh, the mayor that became the governor, uh, Mr. Malloy, they put in uh, drinking water uh, pipes because there was contamination in North Stanford. So um, I was going to quote Margaret Mead, I was going to quote, quote Robert Frost, but they get me very verklempt, and I didn't want to get more emotional than I already was. So thank you all again. Thank you, Aquarian, and thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Wonderful. All right, moving right along here. So I just want to acknowledge a, a few other uh, folks. Uh, we have with us here uh, uh, Justin May. Wave over there, Justin. He's with uh, Gaffney Bennett, our public relations firm, helping us uh, with our communications down to the public. So thanks for being here. Um, I also want to uh, uh, recognize uh, Carolyn Giampi. She's our Director of Sustainability. Carolyn, you got to stand up and wave to the folks here. <laughs> director of Sustainability for Aquarian Water Company. Right, in charge of environmental management, our watershed protection, our patrols. Uh, so, you know, we are, um, it's a team effort, right? And Carolyn plays a big uh, role there. So thank you for being there, Carolyn, and all that you uh, do. Also, um, I want to acknowledge Betsy Morrissey. Where are you, Betsy? Or where is she? Oh, she, she just, of course, she just stepped out. So <laughs> Betsy is the uh, wife of uh, Don Morrissey. Don is our fearless leader, the president of Aquarian Water Company. So all of this effort, all of this work, Don has uh, continued uh, to make sure that we continue on that path of being stewards of the environment. Right? Don Morrissey as president, 
even with all the challenges that Aquarian Water Company faces, never wavering when it comes to the environment and Aquarian Water Company's role in protecting uh, our environment. So uh, I know it pains Don terribly uh, not to be here, but he's uh, out of state on other uh, business, uh, but he is definitely here uh, um, in spirit. So now, uh, Hilly Holmgren, could you come up to the podium here? Come up to the stage. Come on, Hilly, look at that. <laughs> Large man life, you can hang out over there. You know, and, and don't we feel good? Don't we feel proud? I know I do when I think of our future is in the hands of folks like Hillary, right? The next generation, right? She's doing a wonderful job. So Hillary is a dedicated advocate for environmental causes, right? And she's been on this earth less time than I've been at Aquarian Water Company. We're going to hear all that she's done so far. She is uh, something else. So dedicated advocate for environmental causes, particularly concerning the well-being of Long Island Sound. In addition to being a student at Stratford High School, Laura, right, she's making us proud of Stratford High School, she also attends the Bridgeport Regional Agriculture School, where she has gained hands-on experience through boat trips and trawls, as well as constructing underwater rovers to explore the depths of the sound. Exciting. Hurley has also managed the school hatchery, overseeing various marine species such as crayfish, lobster, tilapia, urchins, and koi. She has even raised salmon from eggs and released them into the Connecticut River. I have no idea how to raise salmon, but she <laughs> knows how to do that at a young age. In recognition of her exceptional work as a hatchery manager, true leader, such a young age. She received the Outstanding Hatchery Manager Award and was honored with the title of Seaworthy Oceanographer in a Yukon Early College Experience course. Hillary recently served as an MC for the Youth Climate Summit, a national virtual conference for teenagers. A great role model. Also, she was one of only 12 individuals chosen as salt marsh stewards responsible for assisting in the restoration of the Great Meadows Marsh in Stratford. We all like that work, don't we, Mayor? Thank you, Hillary. This marsh is part of the Stewart B. McKinney National Wildlife Refuge and provides a significant habitat for birds. Hillary and the other stewards, alongside supervisors and volunteers, undertook restoration efforts, such as planting native shrubs and perennials and removing invasive plants, and creating space for Spartan of Patton's grasses. Over 155,000 new plants were uh, uh, replanted as part of the restoration initiative. In addition to participating in the restoration, <laughs> Hillary engaged with visitors to the marsh and collaborated with local bird clubs and teen groups. Her ability to communicate effectively with both adults and peers made her an outstanding representative of the on the conservation project. Hillary's contributions were recognized when she was chosen as the sole spokeswoman for the group, delivering a speech outlining the project at an Autobahn ceremony, where she had the opportunity to meet Autobahn organization leaders. After enduring long hours, mosquito bites, and scorching sun, the marsh was eventually open to the public in August of 2022. A ribbon cutting ceremony attended by the mayor, members of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Connecticut Deep, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, U.S. and state senators, as well as members of Congress marked this milestone. Her ultimate ambition is to work in the marine environment prioritizing aquaculture and conservation, and implementing sustainable practices to preserve natural aquatic ecosystems and boost fish production. Hillary ch uh, cherishes living in a Connecticut beach town and finds fulfillment in assisting others. Tonight, we are truly delighted to honor Hillary with Aquarian's 2023 Environmental Champions Award in the student category for her environmentally focused work. Congratulations, Hillary. Hillary. 
much for allowing me the opportunity to accept this award. I'm entirely grateful that I will further be able to continue my, continue my studies, um, especially pertaining to environmental exploration and research. I've worked in the Great Meadow Salt Marsh for a second year now, and the experience has just confirmed my love for, um, I lost my place, <laughs> for the environment and benefiting it in whatever way I can whether it's like planting native grasses like the Spartina patens and Juncus girardii in both high and low marsh, um, monitoring birds and wildlife in the marsh and um, planting shrubs like Iverfructescens and Baccarus and removing the frag, the Phragmites australis. It's an invasive species from Australia, <laughs> from the hummocks. And um, culminated with my experience in working in the hatchery at Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture School um, where I've worked with all the species mentioned before, from anemones to barramundi. These experiences and many others that I've had in my life excite me for the future of continued studying aquaculture and environment. Once again, thank you. All righty, as we reach the final here, I'd like to thank our presenters, U.S. Senator uh, Blumenthal and Vice Chairman Bukowski, round of applause, both of you, thank you for being here, helping making this event so special. i also like to thank the Beardsley Zoo's Executive Director, Greg uh, Dancho, for his support and in uh, uh, this great venue. Uh, we received scores of nominations uh, uh, for this year's awards, confirming that across our great state, thousands of volunteers devoted endless time and energy to protect and restore Connecticut's natural resources. And so I would like to congratulate our winners once again as we celebrate them as Connecticut's environmental champions. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming to Aquarion's Environmental Champions Award. Please enjoy the, uh, the wine, the beer, and the food safari. Thanks for being here, everybody. Right. 